Grand Theft Auto Online now has eight heists in the game. The latest one is the Diamond Casino heist, and that's one of the best ways to make money in Grand Theft Auto Online. But that doesn't mean that the facility and the doomsday heists that come with it aren't a good way to make money, because they're still one of the best ways to make money in the game. If you haven't done the heists before, they're definitely an awesome way to make money because you're going to get your first time bonuses and get even extra money on top of completing the heists themselves. So these heists are still really, really good. So, because the facilities are half priced this week, we're going to go over everything you need to know about a facility, which one you should buy, what you should buy with it, and everything you need to know about the heists as well to get you set up and smash out these heists. Now, for these heists, you are going to need friends. And I'm well aware that a lot of players that jump into Grand Theft Auto Online don't have any friends that actually play the game. So, if you need people to help you out with the heist, join our Discord server. We've got 50,000 members there. And we've got different text channels specifically set up to help you find friends for your platform. So, I'll leave a link below. Definitely go over there and join that if you need help. So what is a facility? Well, obviously the main point of a facility is to start up the doomsday scenario, which is a set of heists. There's three different heists. It's not actually one. It's three different heists that actually form a storyline and can earn you a lot of money. We'll talk about what the facility can do in a little bit, along with a bit about the heists themselves. But to start off, we actually need to talk about where you should buy a facility, because there's a lot of different options all around the map. Nine different locations, to be exact. And it's sort of tough to tell which one you should buy. My whole mindset with businesses in Grand Theft Auto Online is that the cheaper ones aren't necessarily better. Because in a game like this, time is essentially money. If you're trying to make money as fast as possible, but you have a property that is just so far away, you're going to waste so much time actually driving to that, and you're basically not going to be earning as much money as you could. So it's really important to buy one in a good spot for a good price, basically. And if you haven't already been able to tell, that means you shouldn't really be buying a facility at the top of the map. Now, before people rush to the comments, I do know that there is a certain glitch with the facilities. And if you're doing that glitch, it's a lot better to buy a facility at the top of the map. But we don't do glitching on this channel. So if you're going to comment that, probably don't even bother. So let's start off with one of the most expensive facilities, the Land Act Reservoir. And because this is the most expensive, it's actually one of the most popular because the common conception around all of that is it's probably in the best location if it's the most expensive. But really, that couldn't be further from the truth. I know if you're just looking at the map from above, it does look like it's the closest one to the city, which would make it great in theory. And while it looks that way, in reality, it's actually a lot different. What you're watching now is me trying to drive to this facility. And like I said, it looks like it's right next to the city, but there's actually a massive mountain between the facility and the actual city. And that's not a big deal if you're just going to be flying there with a helicopter or an oppressor, but with the Doomsday Heists, you need to drive a lot of slow vehicles to your facility. And driving around this mountain, not only is it pretty time consuming, but it's actually a pretty tough road to drive a big vehicle on. I mean, the roads are narrow, they're made of dirt, they're really not made for those types of vehicles. So while this is the most expensive one, it looks like it's closest to the city, I don't really think you should buy this one. Instead, I would actually recommend either buying the Ron Alternate's Wind Farm Facility, because this one is the second closest one to Los Santos, and it's almost half the price as the most expensive one. Or I would recommend buying the Grand Sonora Desert or the Route 68 facilities, because they're pretty much right in the middle of the map. There's good roads to go there. I mean, you're not going to be driving across dirt all the time, and they're most likely close to where your other businesses are. I know a lot of the MC businesses and the bunker are sort of around this Sandy Shores Airport area, Area as well and if you're someone like me who is really OCD about having all of their businesses close together this is gonna work pretty much perfect once you figured out where you're gonna buy a facility the headaches don't actually stop there because there's a lot of optional upgrades that you can buy for it as well. With most businesses, all of these optional upgrades are just cosmetic, but the facility is sort of different in the sense that these actually give you some cool things to do. So we'll quickly run through all of them and what they do. The first optional upgrade is the facility style. As you can see, it changes the look of the actual facility itself. Changes the color of the walls, the color of the tables, things like that. This one, though, is completely just cosmetic. This actually doesn't do anything for you. 
And this upgrade alone can cost you up to $450,000, so if you're tight on money, definitely stay away from this one. Facility graphics, again, is just completely cosmetic. This basically just changes the texture of the walls. Again, if you're tight on money, probably don't waste your money on this one. The next one is the Orbital Cannon, and if you watched one of my most recent videos, I actually put this in my top 10 most useless things to buy in the game. The Orbital Cannon is going to allow you to fire a shot from the Orbital Cannon, which is out in space, which pretty much guarantees a kill on a different player in the lobby. The downside to that, though, is that the Orbital Cannon costs $900,000 just to get installed into your facility, and on top of that, it costs up to $700,000. And fifty thousand dollars per shot. I don't know about you, but I've never been so angry at someone that I wanted to spend seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars just to kill them once, knowing that they're gonna respawn in five seconds anyway. So while the concept of the orbital cannon is really cool, it is honestly just a really bad thing to buy. Next up, we've got the security room which is going to allow you to send an elite strike team on other players, basically just like Merryweather mercenaries, but even better. Again, the concept of this is very cool, but this upgrade is $775,000, so it is a lot of money. So if money is a concern for you right now, I wouldn't spend my money on this. Next is the lounge, which is just completely cosmetic. It just changes the look of the lounge in the facility. And finally, we got the sleeping quarters, which is actually one of the ones I would consider buying. And the reason for that is because if you buy a sleeping quarter, it's going to allow you to spawn at your facility. You won't actually be able to spawn here unless you have the sleeping quarters. So once you've bought your facility, go over there. You're going to be put into a really cool animation to actually get into your facility. I sort of like this one. I don't know. It makes me feel like, you know, my character is Batman going down this massive elevator into an underground facility. I don't know, dude. And once you get inside, you're going to notice really quickly that this place is huge. If we're talking about the actual size of a property, this is the biggest property you can buy in Grand Theft Auto Online. And there's a lot of cool things that this thing can do. Firstly, this is going to allow you to store seven personal vehicles. Obviously, more vehicle space is welcomed once you have a lot of vehicles that you need to store. And it's also going to allow you to store up to four specialized vehicles that came with this Doomsday DLC. One of those vehicles is the Avenger, which is essentially a massive flying mobile operations center. With an upgraded Avenger, you can add a weapon workshop and a vehicle workshop where you can customize vehicles like the Deluxo, for example. So all of that is pretty cool. Moving into the facility itself, you've got your two personal assistants here who are going to allow you to buy free snacks, which is always helpful. And you can also request a Pegasus vehicle that you already own. And as we make our way through to the end of the facility, we'll enter the heist planning room. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where the money is going to be made. So let's talk about what the doomsday heists are and how much money you can make off them. Like we said at the start of the video, there's three different heists that you can do. They're all part of the same storyline and essentially act as different acts of the heist. You've got Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Without spoiling the story that goes along with the heist, the whole concept of it is essentially to save the world, so it's a pretty cool little story. And I think adding a story to the heist makes it a little bit more enjoyable and easier to stick with. What's great about these heists compared to the original heists that were launched with Grand Theft Auto Online, you don't actually need four players for this one. This one's like the casino heist. You can do it with anywhere between two to four players, which obviously if you can do math, if you do it with two people as opposed to four, you're going to get a bigger cut of the final take, which is obviously better for you. It also makes it a lot easier not having to find four people if you don't have four friends to play with. As for the payout of the heists themselves, Act 1 is going to pay out $650,000 on normal. If you do it on hard, that's going to increase to $812,000. Act 2 is going to pay out $900,000, which on hard is $1.14 million. And Act 3 is going to pay out $1.2 million, which on hard is $1.5 million. All up, that comes out to $2.8 million on normal and $3.5 million on hard. Obviously, if you want more money, you're going to do it on hard. So we'll just say $3.5 million is the total money that you can make with this heist. Keep in mind that that is going to be split up amongst your group. So if you did it with two people, for example, and you took 50% of the cut, you would earn $1.75 million just from doing the heist. That's not including the bonuses. And there are a few bonuses, so let's go over them now as well. Once you complete all acts of the heist, you're going to get $50,000 as a first-time completion bonus. On top of that, if you complete all three acts in order, which I mean, you should do, that shouldn't really be a problem. You're going to get an additional $500,000 on top of that. 
and there's also an optional loyalty bonus that you can get as well. That one's $175,000, and to do that one, you need to complete the Doomsday Heist in order with the same team of three players. So if you got all of those bonuses, you've earned an extra $725,000, which is pretty cool. So that pretty much wraps it up. The one downside I would say to these heists is that there's actual multiple setups. Basically, there's not actually just setups like there are with other heists. With this one, you've got prep missions and then setup missions. So essentially, you have to do twice as many setup missions just to actually get to the heist. And unfortunately, that does make it all a lot longer. So if you're trying to grind this for money, it can sort of get pretty frustrating to have to do so many setup missions just to get to the point where you can actually complete the finale and earn money. But even though you have to do all of that, the tests are still a pretty good way to make money. If you haven't done them before, it's definitely worth doing them at least once to get that first time bonus. But if you plan on just continuously grinding this heist, I probably wouldn't recommend that because the Diamond Casino heist is going to make you more money per hour. But with all that said, the Doomsday Scenario heists are really cool. They're a lot more cinematic than any other heist. And they sort of just feel, I don't know, a lot more epic than the other heists. We'll just say that. So I hope this video helped you out. A final note on the facility. It's a really cool property. can make you some good money, start up some fun heists, and it opens up a lot of doors for you as a Grand Theft Auto Online player. So I would definitely recommend buying it, especially if you can get it for half price like it is this week. And that's pretty much it. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And consider subscribing for more stuff like this. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Poise. Save the color money green. Paper. I've been on my grind since I was in the seventh grade. Had my first kid, I was only 17. Always a provider for my pack like Wolverines. But you won't find me on the mountaintop.